Visual Rhetoric, Constructing and Analyzing Readability of Text and Image by Elizabeth Kirk and Jean Kiekel of the University of Houston. Students are no longer limited by the four walls of their classroom. Teachers and textbooks are not sole providers of information. This is creating a paradigm shift in classrooms as students and teachers alternate using textbooks, internet, and other technological resources to provide educational content. Traditional education relied on teacher-centered pedagogy with strict sequencing in a very linear instructional method. As emerging technologies are used, classrooms become more learner-centered, enabling students to use their own learning styles, therefore acquiring content in a more natural way. The International Reading Association recommends educators use sites recommended by recognized publishers, authors, and institutions in the classroom. Having websites recommended by organizations such as the American Library Association or Cooperative Children's Book Center means a website has the potential to impact children. With the lack of standards for educational website design, the research question is, can a readability checklist improve educational website design and choices of websites for classroom use? Regardless of discipline, all teachers are reading teachers. Selection of educational materials is one of the most important decisions educators make. Material too easy to read will not challenge students. Materials too difficult to read will frustrate students who are poor readers and inter interfere with the student's ability to learn. The definition of learning is changing, suggesting students not only remember and repeat information, but also be able to transfer information to new problems and settings. Cognitive load theory tells educators students can only process so much information at any one time, impacting the ability to learn new material. All instructional material carries some degree of intrinsic or germane cognitive load, which the brain can easily process. When instruction is poorly organized or accompanied by unnecessary information, the extraneous cognitive load may exceed a learner's ability to process information. Cognitive competencies are lower for younger learners because there has been less exposure to concepts and ideas. As learners gain experience, thought processes become more automated and less cognitive effort is required. An understanding of cognitive load and how it affects learning will help in the creation and design of multimedia learning materials that will be more appropriate and learner-centered. John Deebs, pictured here, initiated awareness of visual elements in the 1970s with the concept of visual literacy. This, coupled with the arrival of the Internet in the 1990s, finds society quickly moving from one placing great emphasis on verbal communication to one placing higher significance on visual communication. Visual rhetoric describes the study of visual images in the field of rhetoric. Rhetoric refers to communication. Through visual rhetoric, we can study symbolic processes. Visual literacy often refers to the understanding of how images and words complement each other for interpretation of objects and events. Visual communication is not a new concept. Today's technological advances and rampant use of visuals means we need to increase awareness of visual literacy and its impact on learning. In print-based materials, we often ignore visual images because understanding is made through the reading of the text. In multimedia environments, text and images interact, requiring viewers to understand visual cues as they move through textual components on a computer screen. This means more attention must be given to the interaction of text and images. A movement beginning in architecture recognizes promises technology has to meet the needs of learners. Universal Design for Learning includes a set of principles for designing curriculum providing all individuals with equal opportunities to learn. UDL principles call for varied and flexible ways in how content is presented, choices of curricular materials, and design of learning environments so overall education meets the needs of learners rather than a one-size-fits-all method of instruction. Research often overlooks information about how symbols are used to communicate, resulting in an incomplete, inadequate, and distorted view of how symbols affect the learning process. UDL looks at the entire learning environment, including visual elements and symbols, to ensure multimedia tools are appropriate. Application of UDL principles to instructional design will improve readability of educational websites for improved student performance. Educational websites run the gamut from drill and practice sites, primarily passive in nature, to full multimedia, highly interactive formats. Most are created by educators considered to be content experts. Creating a readable website is essential in keeping students engaged. Readable means attention must be paid to visual elements, textual elements, navigational elements, as well as the statistical readability of websites. Evaluation of educational websites traditionally looks at interactivity, accessibility, reusability, and learning, with readability rarely mentioned as an evaluation criteria. Because there are very few standards in the design of websites for educational use, there are no universally accepted practices in educational website design. Visual elements cannot be an afterthought added after the textual elements have been created. 
Appropriate and relevant visuals will help reinforce the concepts and supplement the textual elements. Images properly inserted, appropriate and relevant, can help reduce cognitive load of a web page. Images familiar to learners will aid in comprehension. Images can be representational, meaning they bear a physical resemblance to the concept, such as photographs. They can be analogical graphics, meaning they show or imply a similarity between two objects, such as a mouse and a computer mouse. Or they can be abstract, demonstrating a logical connection between the objects they represent, such as charts and graphs. Images can be looked at according to major features and suggested elements, including space occupied, media used, and shapes within the images, as well as the concepts, ideas, themes, and illusions inferred. Evaluation should be based on how well the images fulfilled its purpose for inclusion. If there isn't a good reason for an image to be used, it should be eliminated to reduce cognitive load. Younger learners have less experience with reading and technology. Reading for learning is different than reading for pleasure, and textual elements should be adjusted accordingly. Legibility refers to the ease with which readers can distinguish between letter forms. With more than 1,000 typefaces, when creating educational materials, stick to standard print formats. For legibility purposes, consider the following typographic items, fonts, type size, color, contrast, alignment, and spacing. Appropriate line length is essential for reading. Visual span is the number of letters seen in a single fixation of the eye. When reading, eyes make a number of successive fixations from left to right across a page. If lines are too long or short, eyes tire more easily. In a digital environment, line length of 40 characters or 8 to 10 words per line is considered optimum. Text size affects legibility. Too large or small reduces readability. Ideally, text should be between 9 to 12 points. Younger readers do better with larger font sizes. Text density reduces readability, so text-heavy screens should be avoided. Contrast and color values have an effect on readability. Generally, dark text on light background is easiest to read. Adding light pastel colors to backgrounds improves contrast and reduces glare. Educational websites must be designed so students can get the most out of them without becoming frustrated. Evidence suggests when people cannot determine how to navigate a website or easily find information, they quickly back out and find another source. Home pages should link an entire site in a logical and intuitive manner. Navigational information, icons, and banners should be located in the same place on all pages. Page layout should be similar throughout so learners know they are within the confines of a site. Limiting the number of links reduces frustration for younger learners and those with weaker reading skills. All pages should return to the home page. Consistency makes navigation of pages easier and prevents learners from getting lost. Placement of elements on a page is central to good design. Books are read linearly with pages read from upper left to bottom right, moving to the next page in a sequential order. Evidence suggests eyes jump from one place to another on web pages cued by visual elements of a page. Blinking and flashing should be used sparingly as they attract the eyes. Knowing how users interact with elements of a website can help designers create better websites. Readability formulas evaluate reading materials on the basis of sentence length, words per sentence, number of long words, and vocabulary difficulty. This readability graph, shown here, developed by Fry, was designed to identify grade level scores from first grade to fifth year in college. Fry recommends using only three 100-word representative samples from the material, but stresses if more samples are used, more accurate readability calculations will be produced. Calculating the Flesh Reading Ease and Flesh Kincaid grade level readability formulas with Microsoft Word is easy. In the Word options in the Microsoft Word program, set up the proofing function to show readability statistics. Once this is done, copy and paste the text from a web page into a Word document. Spell check the document, but don't change anything during the spell check process. When the process is complete, a dialog box such as the one shown here gives readability statistics for the text. Most research looks at interactivity, accessibility, reusability, and learning. Because reading text from books and paper is different from reading from a computer screen, more research needs to be done relating to how well visual and navigational elements affect readability of educational websites and how that affects overall learning. By developing standards for educational multimedia design, universal design for learning standards can be applied to all educational websites in order to improve design of instructional materials. The authors have developed a Likert-style checklist for educators to use to evaluate websites from a visual rhetoric perspective. This checklist evaluates websites on the perspectives of visual, textual, and navigational elements and statistical readability. It uses a five-point scale with five being best and one worst. Educators can use any readability formula. Research into the use of this checklist is needed in order to assess its accuracy and ease of use. 
Please see the accompanying paper for this presentation to get a copy of the checklist or contact the authors at the email provided. Thank you.